I should start with the Montreal experience. Uh, this bike path which runs north-south is very popular because it, you can go everywhere with that path, you can cross all the island. And uh, so there are lots of cyclists that started to take that path and that wouldn't have gone on anything else and they wouldn't have been on the street and they wouldn't have gone on uh, bike lanes, standard bike lanes either because they, they fear cars. Now they are separated by parked cars, so they are much more confident. So we had more cyclists that way. And uh, this is the backbone of the bicycle network of Montreal. Uh, and I think it's, it's how it should be seen. And it's a bit the way they, they are doing it in many European cities. doing at least a basic network of separated facilities and on-road facilities for, for the connections. Uh, how were these put in? Were they designed into the street or were they retrofitted? Retrofitted. Yeah. Yes. So did they remove parking or they narrowed the lanes? They narrowed the, the lane. Here. Took one lane away? Yes. No, they, it was it was a one-way street, officially with only one lane, but that was so wide, it was must have been uh, 18 feet or so. <laughs> uh, what about the safety well, overall compared to, say, bike lanes on the street? Uh, it's much more a question of comfort than uh, safety, because uh, people don't feel secure on standard bike lanes on streets because there is no separation. Uh, of course there are some safety problems at intersections when you have uh, bidirectional bike lanes because cyclists are at a place where car drivers don't, uh, well, are not aware they will be. Uh, it's the, the place they are used to be, they are not on the right side of the street, but yet if you uh, Drivers and cyclists do get accustomed, and if you manage them with uh, things like uh, taken, taking off parking so that you have a better visibility between cars and cyclists, then it's much better. Or if you put them on one way street with only one car lane, it's also much better. So uh, you can reduce the problems. And what about the uh, the land use uh, land use issues? I mean, we've got all the sprawl and things happening in the states. Is it the same thing happening here? The cities are getting so spread out. Yes, it's quite the same thing. Montreal uh, metropolitan area is about three million people, uh, and it's I mean the population is spread out over maybe a fifty kilometer radius, so it makes it's, it's quite huge. There are people driving an hour and a half to come downtown to work in the morning. So, and we do have the same type of development in the suburbs uh, with uh, single uh, houses. But in this uh, part of town, which is quite near from downtown, there are lots of cyclists and pedestrians. Uh, about 30% of the transportation is done on walking and uh, cycling. 20% biking and walking? 30%. 30%? Yes. And then what about public transport, do you know? Uh, it's uh, about 20% in this district. Uh, it's even higher in some other places. Are there any city initiatives to actively uh, promote biking and walking or reduce the amount of vehicles by certain percentages? Uh, there are some initiatives, but they are not uh, officially uh, at reducing car traffic. Uh, they are aimed at safety for pedestrians mm -hmm. or uh, things like that. Yes. For example, uh, traffic lights for pedestrians and quite good. Do you think having uh, bikeways like this is gets to the heart of the problems? Or is it still reacting? Oh no, it's more than reacting. The, the bike lanes uh, have been built uh, mainly for uh, recreative uh, 
purpose, but they are now used more and more as transportation and facilities. And they could not be taken away. And well, it's, they are really part of the city now. Oh, no. 